Hello, I'm Dr. Laura Murillo, President and CEO of the Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for joining us. I'm so excited to have our next guest on with us. He is Eduardo Rodriguez, and he's going to talk to us a little bit more about his role as President and CEO of the Friends of the National Museum of the American Latino. Eduardo, thanks for joining us. Thank you for the invitation. Always great to see you and have this opportunity to talk to the amazing community in Houston. Absolutely. And uh, across the country, this excitement and exhilaration regarding the possibility of the Smithsonian Museum dedicated to our community. Give us an update. Well, uh, we're very excited by the, the legislation that passed back in December 2020 made it very clear that the Smithsonian has to pick a location by the end of the second year, which that's where we are. The second year of this uh, of the executed legislation by the end of this year, the Smithsonian has to pick a location. So the challenge is, where are they going to build it? Because not only was the American Latino Museum authorized, but the Women's History Museum was also authorized in that December 2020 legislation, which means Secretary Lonnie Bunch has a huge job ahead of selecting two locations for two amazing and well overdue museums. But we can't simply trust I trust the Smithsonian, yes, but you have to verify, as they say. We, we need to make sure that they build the museum on the National Mall. And right now, there's a very serious push to have these museums built off the National Mall, which is completely unacceptable because our American story is told on the National Mall. 27 million people from not only around the country, but around the world come to Washington, D.C., come to that mall to learn about our nation's history. So those museums must be on the mall, and that's our focus. Pushing a lot of pressure there on uh, the, the Smithsonian Board of Regents, the senators who have control over specific sites on that national mall, specifically by the Capitol building, and finding other ways to make sure that the top locations that they're looking at include a place for the Latino Museum on the national mall. And then lastly, we have to make sure the money's there. So we've been knocking on a lot of corporate doors, sending them directly to the Smithsonian, matchmaking, if you will, to make sure that corporate America knows that the doors are open for a lot of the conversations around capital campaign directly with the Smithsonian. Yes, and as you mentioned, funding, very important. And so I know that you all have reached out to a lot of different corporations from across the, the, uh, the country, but certainly an opportunity for them to absolutely support a segment of the population that has made so many contributions. And so if you're out there listening, please, it's an opportunity for you and your corporation to step up to the plate and invest in our history. Absolutely. And we found that so many of these corporations that gave to the African-American Museum, uh, they're very excited to do the same and follow those actions with support for the American Latino Museum. This is a, a really a, a patriotic opportunity because American history is something that is not partisan. It is something that both sides of the aisle came together in the House and in the Senate to support the passage of the legislation to create these, uh, this museum. So we're very excited to see that corporate America similarly is stepping up, is very interested in, in finding out how they can uh, be right there on the ground floor of this museum's opening one day, but it is still going to take some time. So the community needs to be behind this. We need to have everyone weighing in, pushing out the information that the museum is something that is being worked on just because the bill passed doesn't mean we're done. We have to get across that finish line. And that means knocking on doors and letting our community know they have to make noise about this. Well, we know with you at the helm and so many other phenomenal people from across the country that it shall be accomplished. But again, we can't take it for granted, much work to be done. And as you know, here in Houston at the Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce are at your service to make sure that you guys and we all cross that finish line. So thank you for all you do, Eduardo. Thank you, Dr. Wonderful to see you. And I hope to get out there to your uh, you know, part of Texas to once again, meet in person and gather the amazing leaders in your area. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too.